going on guys? We're driving to a call where I diagnosed a bad TXV last week. Um, yes, it really was a TXV that was bad. It was actually um, pumping down the unit and making it go into a bypass relief. Um, so it was it was completely slam closed and it would not would not open. Um, straight AC is a carrier, so with these it is a sweat in valve. So we're gonna um, go through all the steps and gonna show you how um, gonna show you how to, to do one of these carrier TXVs, same as like a Bryant or any ICP. Hope you enjoyed this one. And before the video starts, we just want to uh, talk about our sponsor for this video. Introducing Field Pulse. Regardless of whether you're doing residential, maintenance, or commercial based work, Field Pulse helps HVAC businesses of all sizes consolidate their business under one platform. Unlike other platforms, Field Pulse is very user friendly and has amazing customer support. Streamline your company's operation, saving you thousands. On average, companies integrated with the Field Pulse software experience revenue growth of 58%. If you're ready to take your business to the next level, click on the link. It's in the description below and try risk free for seven days. Thanks to Phil Pulse for sponsoring this video. All right, so here we are. We're going to be uh, pumping this unit down. <clears throat> I usually like to replace the refrigerant whenever we do a TXV, but uh, in this case, we're going to just pump it down. I'm just going to show you the TXV and how these uh, these carrier ones are a little different. We usually primarily will do train or ream uh, is what we, we deal with the most, but every now and then you get a carrier one. You gotta be super careful with these things. It's really best just to leave them in the box until you're ready to install them. But uh, with this type of TXV, it does have the one end that is the nut fitting, but the other end is going to be sweat. So you wanna make sure you're flowing nitrogen through the system and that you're keeping this valve as cool as possible. So with this type of external equalizer, you're going, we're going to have to unsweat the other because it's just stuck down into the suction line and soldered. So we're gonna unsweat that one, pull it out, and then we're gonna stick, uh, stick this one back into the, into the hole that's pre-made for the, in the suction line, um, and then solder this back up. So before we get started upstairs with the TXV, we're going to remove our Schrader on our liquid line. So this is our coil. We're gonna have to remove some of this B vent and get it out of the way. And then we'll uh, get these doors taken off. All right, so I had to get uh, both doors off. Got the double wall, the B vent out of the way. I swear it's like Carrier. They, they have a team that sits together and says, what is the most difficult way we can make this on someone having to replace a part for us? And they come up with these ideas. It's ridiculous. Either way, so this is our TXV up here in this very awkward position. And you can't get any anything, you can't pull it out any because all of this is still connected. So we're gonna have to unsweat this first, but we'll take this uh, this clamp off with this one uh, 5 16 screw. So we'll get this bulb taken off and then we'll be able to see that area where we're going to be removing this uh this line for the external equalizer and i do believe this bulb has lost its charge i wish i could explain it better to you but you can just feel the way it sounds and how extremely extra light it feels it's 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 a really hard thing to describe but um if you if you felt several of them and then you feel one that has lost its charge you can feel just by touching it the difference that would uh that would make sense while we're having an issue because if you know anything about txvs the bulb is the opening force for the txv so without that charge it is not able to uh, pressurize the refrigerant that's in this bulb and open that valve either way yeah it feels like our bulb has lost its charge which is our our problem here's our line going in for our external equalizer. I think it would probably be best to, to do this first. Once we get all this removed, I'm gonna have my new TXV sitting here. And the first thing I'm gonna do is sweat this, this line in so we can get that out of the way and we don't run any risk of um, getting any type of 
debris inside of that hole. To do this, I believe it's going to be pulling this coil out of the cabinet enough to where we can have easy access to the side of the uh, TXV. Try to give us a little more slack on this line. And at the same time, you got to watch your PVC. I'll probably have to cut that. But that's going to give us, once we get it pulled out a little more, that's going to give us enough room to, to work, work with this. Okay, so that worked out perfect. So we're going to disconnect our, um, our side with a nut on it, with a flare nut. So we'll get this disconnected. You have to use two crescent wrenches, one for each piece. You don't want this tw this uh, these cap tubes twisting at all, so make sure you're keeping that completely still and unable to twist. We'll get this taken off, and then we'll we'll go ahead and cut off the other side. Just keeping that side completely still. I'm just gonna break free that. All we're doing with this side is just holding it still. that so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get my copper cutters and we're gonna cut this okay we got that cut loose now it's just uh, removing this uh, external equalizer line and we'll be ready to go back with a new one so we're gonna put very low heat on this and then we're gonna have some channel locks that we're just gonna pull really gently as it starts to heat up. Alright, there's that. So before you get started, make sure you put your, your new gasket on your TXV. And then we're going to start by getting this side tightened up. And we're going to get our um, our line into the hole down here. Once we get everything fitted, that's when we'll go and we'll uh, we'll start our nitrogen. So our line has had time to cool off some. Just pops down in there. You can see those little pieces of copper on each side that'll stop it from going any further down. You want it to sit right on there, just like that. So we get that tightened up, and then we're going to get this all put in. I'm going to clean that up really good, and then we're going to start flowing our nitrogen. All right, so we got everything hooked up up here. It's time to go turn our nitrogen on, purge the system, and then uh, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, set our uh, regulator to braze and let it just slowly triple through nitrogen um, while we're <laughs> we're going to purge our system and what this is doing is it is pushing all of the oxygen out of the system and replacing it with just nitrogen because the oxygen is what causes the oxidation in the lines we're going to go to purge and remember we have our shredder out of the liquid line now we're just going to flip it over to braze and that is just going to Keep nitrogen flow through the system while we're while we're brazing. So first things first, we're going to wrap our TXV with this wet cloth, and we're keeping it far away from where we're soldering. We just we just want to stop some of that heat before it hits the valve. really good we got rags starting to sizzle that means we need to hurry up
Okay, so our rag has done its job. It has kept that valve from getting hot or overheating. Solder joints look good. I do have a little bit of extra on there. I dripped, but that's all right. So what I'll do now is I'll just uh, pressurize and make sure we don't have any leaks up here. Okay, so we know we're leak free up at the valve where we uh, just uh, installed all of that, but I forgot to replace this dang dryer. So um, at least we know we're leak free. So we're gonna do the whole process over again. Uh, we're gonna cut this out, put our new filter dryer in, and then we'll purge and uh, flow some nitrogen as we braze this. Got our new uh, dryer installed. Just making sure it wasn't leaking. It all looks good. So we're gonna remove uh, the nitrogen out of the system and we're gonna start our vacuum and then we'll go up upstairs and uh, finish putting all the evaporator back together. All right, guys. So um, I wasn't able to film that last little part, but wasn't, uh, wasn't really much else to do. I just had to, um, you know, get the doors back on it and all that. I did, um, had to reattach the, that bulb. The only thing I would have liked to have shown is how <clears throat> I always re-insulate it. Um, when I'm finished, I don't ever go back with that same thin insulation. I like insulating it really well. So I use um, some new insulation, the 7 8 um, insulation, and wrap the whole bulb in the line, and then use a uh, few zip ties, and then uh, sometimes I'll even tape it all the way up. But the alt, everything else looks good. I'm still waiting on the vacuum to finish. These calls take a really long time. They, if you're if you're really taking your time doing everything how it's supposed to be done, nitrogen pulling a good vacuum, it's gonna it's gonna take several hours. I always give a time frame uh, to the shop when they're making my schedule. You know, always give me four hours on these. I'll sometimes I can get it a little quicker than that, around three hours, but just to be safe, because now I still have to charge it. And it's, uh, it's 12 o'clock, and I've been here since about 9.15, 9.30. So three hours now, it'll be about right. In another 30, 40 minutes, I should have it, um, the vacuum finished and all charged up and getting it started. All right, so we're adding our refrigerant now. The number one thing to remember when charging a system for a TXV is the subcooling. You wanna see what your system calls for. This one calls for a 10 degree subcooling. And pretty much what subcooling is, is how full the liquid line is of refrigerant and how much refrigerant is stacking in the outdoor unit. It's just the same if, um, if you know anything about refrigeration in general, uh, it's the same as like um, uh, a refrigeration guy saying he's gonna clear the sight glass. So the sight glass will have uh, vapor and um, liquid and clearing it is making it just straight liquid. So that's what we're wanting to do in this liquid line. We're wanting to continue to increase our subcooling until the system is stacking refrigerant into the condenser and causing the liquid line to be completely filled with refrigerant. So once we get to that 10 degree subcooling, it should be a full line of liquid. And that's what that TXV needs to maintain the constant superheat. You wanna think of your TXV as a constant superheat valve. That's, that's its whole purpose and primary function is to maintain superheat. So that's the most important thing when you are charging a system with a TXV is to get your correct subcooling.